The refusal to accept an election defeat, voter suppression, election violence, a coup attempt, even culminating in a threat to multiracial democracy itself. All of this may sound like it's ripped from a recent headline, but the truth is it actually comes from a little known story in America's past. The White League insurrection of 1874 toppled the state government of Louisiana and ended America's first experiment in multiracial democracy, where, for the first time in its history, every American could participate in governing regardless of their race. To cast a vote in the United States is an act of faith and hope. We've never had a president of the United States stir up a violent attempt to block the transfer of power. I believe nearly two years later, this is still a time of reflection and reckoning. If we are to survive as a nation of laws and democracy, this can never happen again. As we remember and assess the damage of the January 6th insurrection on America today, it's valuable to take a hard look at the impact and consequences that white conservative election denialism played in our shared history. Back in the 1870s, elected officials failed to address right-wing misinformation or to hold coup leaders accountable, allowing white conservatives to use threats and violence to toss out legally elected officials after the 1872 general election, substantially undermined the voice of citizens, especially black voters. In Louisiana, black legislators had just passed the nation's first civil rights laws and a new state constitution a possibility white supremacists had literally started a civil war to prevent. When PBS Pinchback, the first black governor in U.S. history, outmaneuvered would-be insurrectionists' attempt to seize the Louisiana state arsenal in 1872, they set up a shadow government headed by John McHenry, the white supremacist governor's candidate, who refused to concede defeat. From 1872 to 1876, the group's paramilitary enforcement arm, the White League, harassed legitimately elected state officials out of office. Those who refused to leave were assassinated. Rather than arrest McHenry and members of his shadow government, the federal government allowed the movement to fester and operate with impunity. The White League's playbook included massacring their political opponents, setting fire to black schools and churches, attacks on black educators, and having black workers fired for voting. All of this culminated in 1874, when the White League insurrection succeeded in toppling the state government in Louisiana and mortally wounding democracy in the United States. Reconstruction, America's first experiment in equal rights and social democracy, ended in this wave of misinformation, election denialism, and violence created by white conservatives to return themselves to power. We, the people, are not we confront a very similar movement in today's Republican Party, one that has already employed voter suppression, harassment, paramilitary organizing, direct violence, attempted election rigging, and an insurrection. The tactics and successes of the White League in the 1870s show what happens when a major political party attempts to sabotage multiracial democracy without consequence. Standing by now, as proponents of democracy did then, is a mistake we cannot afford to repeat. <laughs>